Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my channel members for their ongoing support. If you would like your name to appear on screen, then you can click on the membership link that will be in the description down below. I have two tiers, one for shout outs and a second tier where you will get weekly members only content. This content will be catch up live streams, members only reactions, or sometimes I will do a pre recorded chatty get ready with me video where I update you on life stuffs. There is also, of course, the custom emojis and the cute animal badges next to your name. Of course, you just watching this video is already much appreciated, but if you wish to support the channel further, you can do so by subscribing, commenting, liking, sending super thanks, and of course, joining the membership. And now let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shakar Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. If you are curious to see what my journey to the stage is like, hopefully to become a pro. I'm around eight weeks out right now. Come on then. Then be sure to check out the dedicated vlog list. I upload often onto my Instagram and to stories as well. I'm a somewhat active on Twitter and TikTok I literally use for editing, so never message me there. I never look at my TikTok, I just use it for editing <laughs> my reels. <laughs> um, otherwise, otherwise, if you're ever interested in approaching an eight weeks training plan, then email me on the email that's in the description down below. I've got various different training plans with, uh, different, uh, with different phases of training for an eight week period. Uh, with that, you can also get some nutritional guidance and a welcome pack for information on what to do. Uh, what well, to do, what not to do, if you hit plateaus, etc. Uh, I also do one-to-one -one coaching, but I have very limited spaces. So email me and I can let you know my availability. If you're a European, I could probably fit some people in uh, in like around lunch times when I'm normally at home to walk the dogs. But otherwise, yeah, uh, email me, just email me. That's the best thing to do and just keep checking. Um, today we are going to be looking at some TikToks. Because I feel like it's been a while. And in particular, we're going to look at Jordan Allen Hall. Because she's she's a character. Uh, Jordan Underwood. So we're going to start off with one. Where she says... Your entire identity is being fat. And I feel like I've seen this. Have I seen this? Let's go back. No, I don't think I have seen this. I've kind of stopped around here because I recognize the nails, but this particular one I haven't seen. So, what she has to say. If you believe you can judge someone's entire personality and identity and life based on what they post online, you have been so deeply duped by the powers that be. Why is it always, oh, social media is fake, you don't know everything, da 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 until it's someone whose content or identities or politic you don't like. It's the thing is though, if all you post like, it's kind of like me too, if somebody turns around to me and says like, oh, your entire identity is like bodybuilding or weightlifting, which it, it kind of is. <laughs> I literally have like a bodybuilder react in the title. Like it's something that I'm very passionate about. It's something that I really love doing. Does that mean I don't have other interests? No, but a big part of my online identity, especially online identity, is being a bodybuilder, is being a buff chick. So, like, I don't understand why you would be offended by that. If that's the if that's the information you put out there, and that's the consensus that people come to, then what's wrong with that? Like, you know, obviously you spend the majority of your time talking about, like, fat positive and, like, fat uh, activism things so you know being fat is kind of no about it being fat is kind of at least your online identity i don't really i don't want some it's like people want to they want so desperately to be special and to have a, like an identity to, be, to, uh, to have an identity and to be different and then when they people do see them as something different then they get offended by that it's like well, you don't know me it's like well well what is it though <laughs> what do you want it's either fake or it isn't if you go this is really interesting because i thought the problem that you guys had with my content was that i was glorifying obesity so if my content 
is like me being fat and I think the following word was sad. Um, you should have no problem with that because it would be discouraging people from being fat. Right? Not really. If you're if your content is about being fat and being proud to be fat, then that's it. Like, I get people message me all the time that I encourage them to go to the gym, that they go to the gym and because they watch my content, they train harder and like, or they, you know, they weren't in the mood to train and they go and train. And I love that. I love that I have that kind of effect on people. I love it when people message me and they're like, send me before and afters and go like, oh, look how much stronger I've gotten or look how much weight I've lost or look, I have to set a PR and my deadlifts or my squats. I get messages like that all the time. It's awesome. Like, it really is like one of the best parts of doing this, right? So if I have that kind of positive influence, then surely her that has like a large platform is going to have a negative influence where people who are obese and that are maybe not willing to change or that are looking for excuses to stay obese, they look at people like her that justify it and that indeed glorify it. I, I, I don't understand her logic. Another really important connection between fat phobia and ableism is that fatness in itself is pathologized. We label fatness as a disease in this country, which means that when you go seek medical care for other issues, they refuse you care until you fix the initial issue that you're having. Well, the thing is, it is a disease because it's something that is... <coughs> Violet, please. Because it is something that has like negative health influences on the body, right? Like excess body fat, whether it's around your organs or under the skin or just in general, which is like there's not really on the, any other places, but like that has negative health impact, um, mental and physical. So often, if you have excess body fat, the chances that if no, the chances that you are experiencing health problems are more likely than not in regards to the excess body fat. Now, does that mean that you should first lose weight and then they'll fix the problem? No, you should probably do both in conjunction. And a doctor, I will always stand by this, I do believe that doctors don't always uh, perform proper diagnosis. I'm sure that a lot of obese people will go to the doctor and they will go like, yeah, they, they will just say like, just lose weight. And that's not right, they need to check because it could be that it isn't obesity related. The chances are small, but it could be that it isn't. So as a doctor, your job is to care and heal people. Well, actually, medical doctors prescribe medicine, but let's just say your, your job is to make people healthy by whatever means possible, right? So you should try and do it. Um, you should, so you should take the time to look into it properly and not just go like, oh, well, it's kind of like if I go to a doctor with a problem and they go like, oh, it's probably from steroids. And it's like, well, it could be. Not that I take that many. It, it could be. Yeah, it could well be. But I would like you to still double check to make sure that it isn't that or it is something else. But so I, 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 get, I mean, it's never happened to me, by the way. But... I get where she's coming from with that, but I don't think that they're saying like, oh, well, if you have cancer, first lose weight and then we'll treat the cancer. That's not how that works. That is your fatness. Even though every condition that a fat person could have that could be blamed on their fatness, then people also get. The thing is, though, it's you know, the chances of you getting certain problems when you're obese are just much greater. And the chances of you of them impacting you more negatively in, in like could kill you are also greater. It's not yes, thin people can get type two diabetes. Yes, thin people can also have high blood pressure and have also cl clogged arteries, etc., etc. But the thing is, the chances are greater when you are bigger. It's just it's just statistics. Like I don't understand what the what the argument is here. It's kind of like. I can say this with bodybuilding, you know, if you take a lot of steroids, then ne yes, the chances of somebody that is a steroid abuser, not user, but abuser, that never comes off cycle, that takes very large amounts, the chances of them having liver problems are, are going to be greater. 
because that's just what you're doing to yourself. If you're poisoning your body with food instead of performance enhancers, the chances of you having health-related uh, uh, side effects because of that are greater. Doesn't mean that a thin person can't get liver problems. Yes, of course I can. But I don't know, it's bizarre. And with that, ableism is used to excuse fat phobia. I don't hate fat people. I just don't think it's healthy. I just want them to be healthy. They're a strain on the medical system and so on and so forth. I literally don't understand her argument here because what she's saying is it, the, all of this, there's no need to put it between the bunny ears because it's all true. Like people want obese people to be healthy. They, want, they are a strain on the medical system. They are a cost to society. So like, what, what, what's the... Get it? I don't understand her argument there. It's like she she's very good at like word salading things and throwing out like buzzwords, but like there's no actual point. When we're talking about the connections between fat phobia and ableism, there's a few places that you can start. The first thing that I like to go to is that they're both access based oppressions in a lot of ways. And what I mean by that is that like you are physically barred from doing certain things based on the way that your body looks or the way that it is. I mean, you're physically barred because you've eaten yourself into a position where you physically cannot do certain things. This is not society stopping you. It's not my fault that you can't fit into a plane seat properly. It's not my fault that you can't fit in a, a Disney ride properly. It's not my fault that it's difficult for you to find clothes because you've chosen to... Um, that you, you have chosen to eat to such well you can argue so there's underlying mental health problems etc etc but as an adult you take responsibility at some point right you have a choice to remain obese and to do nothing about it and to complain about the world that you're in that you don't fit into it as opposed to adapting to the world like if you're making a choice to look a certain way that doesn't fit the norm then also expect that 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 is going to just have certain costs associated to it whether the cost is that you're a bit of an outsider uh, that you are uh, it's going to be hard to find clothes that people are going to look at you that maybe you can't take part in certain activities that's like if that's if you are making that decision yourself not because of an actual disability or an accident or something happening some medical thing happening to you it's, um, you can't really complain about it. For instance, if you are a fat person and there are no chairs that fit you in a movie theater, that's your fault. There's nobody else's fault but yours. So what the whole, the movie, the movie theater therefore has to ex increase their seat sizes and therefore decrease their revenue income because of the fact that they need to accommodate some fatties. Doesn't work like that, does it? It's everything in the world is about business. It's about making money. Now, if you want a theater that fits fatties, then you go and create theaters for fatties where the seats are larger, you know? And then guess what? You're gonna have to still charge more because it's gonna cost more money to make those seats. You're not gonna be able to accommodate as many million people and you're gonna try and still make some sort of um, uh, profit. Like at the end of the day, you're not doing movies for free. They cost money to make, it costs money to rent the buildings, it costs money to build the things. So, yeah, because everything costs money, you're going to have to expect to pay for it if it falls outside the standard. Because it's going to have to be custom made and bespoke. Things like that cost more money. You can't go to the movie theater. If you are in a wheelchair and that movie theater has stairs to access it, you can't go to that movie theater. So that is like a link. But that's different though. Like, look, accommodating wheelchairs or accommodating people that are disabled like that is not the same as somebody that's just fat. Like, you can do something about your fatness. You can't do something about being wheelchair bound. It's not the same. It's not the same correlation. That's kind of saying like, oh, well, you can't go into this movie theater because you're black. It's like, if you can't change being black, you can change being fat. Like, it might be very hard. I agree. It's, it's, it's going to be very hard for a lot of people, but you can still change it. I think based on like what the asks are from the movements there needs to be like structural 
change in order for all people to have access to all spaces. When we're talking about the connections between this is also a problem though. You cannot know by looking at someone whether or not they have an eating disorder. And you can to some degree. I don't know. I feel like I've seen this, but I feel like I haven't. It's very possible that I've scrolled through these before. And maybe I have reacted to these. Maybe I have. Have I reacted to these before? Maybe I have. Maybe I have. Because I feel like I have. In which case, I'm sorry, guys. Let's just go to the mustache. Let's just go. I noticed, I just noticed the mustache. Let's just scroll up a bit and go from there. Go to some more recent videos. I think maybe that's a better idea. Well, that's about enough transit visibility for me. So I'm just going to wrap it on up and head on home. But it is really, it is really confusing. I find it so. Well, well that's about enough. Well, that's about enough. It is very confusing for a lot of people when you are trans. And I, li I spoke about this in a video before with her because I, I wasn't too sure what's going on right. And she apparently ident... See, I keep calling her she and I'm, just, I'm probably even misgendering her. And I'm not even... I, genuinely, I'm not even doing that on purpose. Like, if she wants me to refer to her as... If, if they want me to refer to them as a he or a she, I, w I will do so. But they also have to understand that if you're, if I'm sitting here super feminine and I go like, no, I'm, I want you to call me a, a he, it's really, it's really confusing. And that's not to be horrible and that's not to misgender people and it's not to not be understanding. It's just that this, what, how she is identifying is a really new concept within society. And it doesn't mean that people shouldn't learn and not be understanding. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that from the perspective of somebody that isn't part of that and to for who it is all very new, it's just very confusing. Like I I'm I guess I'm more traditional in the sense that like I'm very feminine, believe it or not. Even though but then you could say I fall out of the norms because I'm very muscular. But I still dress feminine, I look feminine put on makeup these are all feminine things and should that be so i don't know like that's a societal thing that's a whole different story but it is very confusing for somebody to look like a woman to dress like a woman to act like a woman but to also then have a mustache but then identify as male <laughs> like it just is and there's not there's not really like i'm i'm all up for learning somebody explained it to me in my comment section before and they said they even said like i understand how it can be confusing for people that don't identify like this and i'm sure if for her it's probably confusing to be in this situation where you know you're you're one thing but then you ex you express as another thing but internally i'm sure it's all very confusing to everybody but it's also i think some leniency needs to be given to people like myself who are not out here purposely trying to offend people because it's not about that it's just that if you look like a man i'm going to assume you identify as a he like I, the, the, maybe that is that is just how i've been brought up for like the last 37 years you know 36 years doesn't mean i can't change if you tell me like look i want you to identify i want you to refer to me as a he or a she or this or that i will of course i will like i don't whatever like do you boo at the end of the day but if i'm just looking at pictures i'm just gonna assume you look you identify as how you present oh but this is always so confusing the gender politics it's it's um uh, but it's a really new concept just bear that in mind like it is and it isn't i know it's been around for centuries but now that is like um becoming more of a social norm which is not necessarily a bad thing at all it just means that it's it's it is just it's just confusing for people all people like me that's it unfortunately I find it so incredibly amusing. By amusing, I mean it makes me want to jump off a cliff. When transphobes will say with their whole chest, they love everyone, they love gay people, they love trans people, they have no problem with people being trans. People can identify however they want. And then go on to say the absolutely most horrifically oppressive shit you have ever heard a person say in your entire life i literally have someone in my life who only refers to me with it pronouns my pronouns are they he who literally okay so like i have been i in that case i have been misgendering him 
for many videos, but I literally don't do that on purpose. This is also, like, in that case, you have to understand that this is, uh, like, I think doing it is really rude. Like, uh, referring to anybody as it is rude as fuck. Like, I don't agree with that. But I think, you know, like, me referring to him as a she or a her is purely because of the way he presents. And, like, it's gonna be, it's, I, I'm like going forward I will try my utmost to refer to him as him because like obviously this is now being clear to me that this, that's how they how he identifies but it's 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 very weird for me because it it just is and like that's that's not to be horrible and that's not because I'm transphobic at all like I like I don't I literally don't care as what you identify but it's just I think you just have to be patient with people that they people just don't understand N normal people in their normal day-to-day -day life, they don't understand things that are nuanced. Like, I get it as well. People question me about things sometimes. And, like, I can't get offended by that because I'm different from everybody else. Like, I choose to be different. So, yeah, people are going to assume things, are going to be curious. Some people are going to be really rude. Like, it, it happens. But I should be confident within myself that it's okay. And if it doesn't come from a place of malice, then just don't be offended by it. Like... I don't know. I don't know. Some of it is really confusing. Literally, will in the same conversation then be very, very concerned that we're going to tell someone because she doesn't want people to think that she's homophobic. Nobody cares about your beliefs. They care about your actions. Control your behavior. Well, I think this is right as well. So I think even if people, like for myself, like people could come for me now and say that I'm misgendering, even though obviously like I'm clearly not doing this on purpose, like, my actions will show you that I'm not doing it to offend him. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's just a sight, isn't it? You know, you look a certain way, you're going to assume a certain thing. Then maybe that's not right, but I don't, that's just the, how the world works. Your middle school and high school health and wellness classes did not give you a well-developed understanding of fatness i wonder if it's because in school you're supposed to learn about things that are more important than fatness i don't know things like history world wars maybe algebra science chemistry learning languages there is so many subjects in school fatness it's not really that important in the grand scheme of things, is it? Like, you know, I think that the world could do with, um, in terms of progression, job careers, etc., having a better understanding of fatness, I don't think it's going to help you very far. Unless you're very lucky to become, like, some sort of social media influencer like him. Fatness is not important. <laughs> if your entire worldview... She's on somewhere. fat people, how people become fat, why fat people are treated the way they are, and how we should be treating fat people is because of your 7th grade health class. Please read more books. Yeah, because all of the books that you should be reading that have, you know, impact on the that has that have impacted our culture are to do with fatness, you know? Don't bother with the Shakespeare's, the Tom Sawyer's, you know, all of the sort of like the, the Gulag Archipelago. Don't bother with any classics. No, 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 no. Read queer fat embodiment. That's what you need to know to better yourself as a person. Very important PSA for all my drivers out there. When someone flags you down when you're driving and they're like, your tire's flat. And you and your big brain go, it's okay, I'll deal with it tomorrow. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Now, or when you're tired. Yeah. These glasses, I, I'm not, okay. So is she driving in these glasses? Because in that case, I'm very happy she got a flat tire because she should not be driving in glasses like this because they would, they severely impair her vision. And that's just factual. You should not be driving in glasses like this. So yeah, I'm glad you got a flat tire because you should not be on the road driving like that. Yeah. Grab a top, top, get in my tub. Mommy's gonna scrub down all of these subs. You 
subjects and I aim to please. If you don't believe me, check my knees. Check my knees. I, you can't. I would check the knees, but I, I, I don't think she can check the knees. I don't think she's seen her knees in a while, and I'm very sure her knees are quite painful. Some days you gotta wake up and say, I got a fat ass and a good heart, and that's gotta count for something. Can I get an amen? So, good morning. It's 1.40. Let's have breakfast together. Oh, 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 oh. I'm having an egg and cheese. Cheese. <laughs> cheese is nice. I love cheese. It's one of my favorite foods. Oh, An egg and cheese. There's sausage on it, but. The sausage is like very small. This is way too much bread for my liking. I don't like the, the filling. I can't even see the filling, but the size of this bread, it's like an entire freaking loaf, man. It's, it's unnecessary. It's too much bread for to make, to make a good sandwich. Tomatoes. If you believe you can judge someone's entire... So I've been scrolling back this entire time instead of scrolling forward, which is fine because it doesn't matter. My, my battery is about to end anyway, so... On that note, I am going to go. Let's insert the male and female emojis in honor of our trans folks, our trans friends. And, um, you know, I will try my utmost to refer, refer to him as a him going forward. Because I, 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 it's, it's, really, it's really hard when he dresses like a woman all the time. But besides that point, we're not. I'm not. I don't really want to talk about like identity politics because I don't. I actually, genuinely, I care about it in the sense that people should just be who they want to be and they should be accepted. But I don't care about it enough to like get into debates about it. You know, I look different. I look weird. I don't fit a social, feminine norm. So who am I to talk, right? So yeah, it's okay. Anyway, I'm gonna go. So insert those emojis. Comment, like, subscribe. Dislike the video if you did start liked it and let me know down below why and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.